Okay, Paul Inventor 3 here. We're back continuing with our notes from our last video here. Uh, again, I was saying about. Remember, this is as viewed through magnetic viewing paper, which is showing the divisions of north and south. Now, you could see this field just goes way up in the air and just dips down slightly into the magnet here. This one is pushed way off to the edge too, but it's much uh, less curve. Now it's very interesting, is watching with a compass, you could see that this is south, south, north, 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 and in the middle, it's quite strange. So anyhow, let's continue. Here's the one side of the magnet as seen through magnetic viewing paper. You would just see a circle outline of the magnet and a top view with the area that dipped down into the magnet right there. This side, looking through the magnetic viewing paper, there's a definite circle. Now, let's go on to the next page. Now here's the drawing of the compass going around these two magnets that are glued together. As you can see, this is north, north, right in the middle, it's like nothing. South, south, north. Now, compass needle jumps fast between positions 1 and 2, 3 and 4, and 5 and 6. Otherwise, all the other positions, there is a smooth transaction. Okay, let's go on to the next thing. As looking at these magnets now through a plastic cap filled with some furrow fluid, uh, here's our two magnets below the cap with our puddle of furrow fluid. And over here you can see we got this side with that where there's two norths up there with the ring. The furrow fluid will also show a dimple in its surface right there. Now let's show you this next drawing, Oops. which is pretty much showing the magnets now. It's quite interesting because it's like we have a zero zone where there is no magnetic field. It's like we have a giant north following that slight curve that we have. Over here, little smaller areas of south, even smaller, north, north, and in this area, quite interesting. It's like zero. So, it's like we're really manipulating these fields. Um, now, what's quite interesting too is I, I had to do this experiment over again just to confirm what I had here and I did the experiment over again using two completely different magnets same size weight and shape uh, the second time I did it I got a little bit different of a shape here's this magnet I have drawn on there it's almost like a rabbit head <laughs> a bunny ears you see that shape this time when I glued these two magnets instead of having a perfect circle I had an odd type of shape there now I'm gonna show you with this paper right now Let's see if I can get a clear picture here 
Oh, that is very hard for you to see that. So let's see, how about this side? But you could see I have. I can't see it as clear as I can see it. I could see it very detailed. I don't know if I could zoom in more. And then when you. Let's see here, what the heck am I doing here? Where am I? Where am I? If I push, get the glare off of there too. But you could see that faint white line like with bunny ears on it. Whoops, there it is right there. You could see that shape. See the, the white thin line in the middle? So it's quite strange because I also. Where the heck are we going to zoom out? So, oops, separated these magnets. Uh, and it's strange that that shape still stays there. So it's showing some sort of memory. So this is a very important point too. That these magnets are definitely retaining some sort of memory. I'm believing they're even retaining some sort of memory through the air. Uh, another interesting thing I found is that while gluing these magnets with same poles together, uh, not just two of them, but as many as eight with all same poles together stacked on top of each other, not the way they are now, like that. Um, that marker dot is not what you're seeing in the paper. That's another interesting thing is, oops, if I can get them on duck off the side of the chair here. Let's see. Oops. Get that apart. Stay there. Okay. Now, this one. Where's our viewing paper? That little shape that I was showing you will not appear on this side. Uh, it's hard for me to get an exact But you won't see that little white outline that we're seeing on this side There it is See that little bunny ear shape in there So that's quite peculiar uh Oh yeah, as I was saying now, as I was gluing a lot of these together and then breaking them apart and running them back through the copper tube, I'm finding that their times, their fall times through the tubes now are completely different. So by stacking these together with same poles, uh, it's actually changing I'm, I'm guessing the the magnetic strength because of the the fall times that I'm getting maybe it isn't affecting the magnetic strength maybe it's just warping the magnetic fields out in a slightly different direction which then you would get a different fall time also uh, I'm almost out of time again. Uh, at one point I noticed that gluing two of these magnets together and studying it for a long time with the compass, um, that at one point I accidentally changed the polarity of my compass. And that killed about 50 of my experiments and I had to go back and redo everything. And uh, So I found out a specific combination of movements that I could take with the compass around the two magnets with same poles glued together that will change the magnetic pole of the, the compass needle which was also interesting uh, 
So I'm almost out of time again. Uh, there's even more I'd like to share, but I think we'll save everything for next video. Till next time, Paul signing off.